Hello, my name is Breda Butterfield and um, I live in Prospect. I come here to South Hill community, to the Ladies Club every Tuesday morning. We meet up and have a chat and a cup of tea and this is how we got involved with the genealogy through our meetings in the mornings. Now, we I want to start off with my grandmother. She died, Mary Ann Barry was her name. She was known as Mother Barry. Anyone in Prospect would have known her as Mother Barry. And she died in 1969. I have a picture there for Headstone. People around would have, the older people would have remembered her. She was a mother to all of us. I remember when my mother was younger and she was having us, she worked in Limerick Prison. So we would have to go to my grandmother in the morning. She'd get us ready for school and she'd mind the youngest of our family that wouldn't have started school yet. So as we were growing up, our job would have been to take the child up to my grandmother's in the morning and get back down to St. Mary's for school and back up again in the afternoon yes. to pick up that child again. Okay. And she minded all of us, like, you know. There was 16 in all, but only nine survived. But um, we were all one behind the other, so we all had a job to do, like, you know. We all, we all actually ended up bringing the child to, up to my grandmother to be minded while the next one took it to school, yeah. when it did reach school age. I got very interested in the genealogy part of the, you know, the research into the family history. Yes. And the reason why I did it was, uh, I was home at about five minutes early for my dinner one day, and I was watching Discovery while I was waiting for my dinner. And next thing I see this, uh, there was a program on about a plane that went down in the British Channel, a Royal Air Force plane. And I, I started thinking, and I said, Jesus, I said, my uncle went down in a plane in the British Channel. And I was wondering, was that, the, they had the, they got the engine and the number, mm -hmm. was that the plane? Now, I never found out afterwards whether that was the plane or not. Mm -hmm. But then I started doing a, a small bit of research into my family on both sides, on my father's side and my mother's side. And uh, this is a photograph then of my, my uncle again, James, and uh, a friend of his. The pilot's body was recovered, but the other three lights weren't. Yeah, yeah, of course. But there's uh, grand uncles and grand aunts of mine that left Clamell. Mm -hmm. They lived in a place of Newcastle, outside Clamell, and they went off to America. And uh, I found out where a, a, a grand aunt of mine was buried in St. Raymond's, here in the Bronx. And the reason why I'm doing it is uh, for the grandchildren, more than my own children. Mm -hmm. No, because I know when, they were, when I was there, yes, I was the more interested. <laughs> and I could have asked the father-in-law questions about his family, like, you know, and uh, I think he used to often tell me. And I was, I was interested, and I didn't write down anything or anything like that. But uh, as I said, over oh, that discovery program and the playing alone in the British Channel kept me. Oh, I was very done afterwards that I didn't ask questions. Didn't I go on to graveyard? As I said to you at the start, it says, it's not one it's not one for me to be going reminiscing about the past. I always go to look from the, from the future. And uh, so over all the illness and all that, I don't look into the back. I don't look back into the past. I look for what's coming ahead of me. But I found another interesting thing then, that all my father's side are buried above in the middle of the graveyards in Mount St. Lawrence. So there was my next project. Okay. And I know my uncle then is buried above. He soon is buried above an Oliver. And my own mother is buried above an Oliver mm -hmm. and father. Every time I go up there, I find it hard to hard to find the grave. Then I find I kind of go back to your Irish roads, and when you're going into a grave like that, like Sir Michael Collins, yeah. Emma de Valera, and when you find out that husbands and wives have even split after they're dead, mm -hmm. one won't be buried in one plot, that's uh, Sean South, and another one won't be buried in Michael Collins' plot, mm -hmm. and it all goes back 
Even in death they're thrown apart like. Yeah. Bloom, I'm 45 years of age. That was the first time in 45 years that I ever went into Mount Salons. Rather than going in my grandmother's and grandfather's funeral. Mm. It was my first thought to genealogy. What am I come back looking at the dead for? Mm. And it had changed my mind out completely. I was, my grandmother only lived for the first, my great grandmother only lived for the first grandchild so there was a photograph taken in my grandmother's front yard, a front garden and there's three generations in it, there's my mother, there's me, my father, my grandmother and my great grandmother. Her father had a couple of businesses in Cork mm -hmm. and she married a constable which was beneath her, so her family disowned her. And um, her husband died young, he died young, he died at 47. And her only way of making a living was to make uh, the lace for the autocrats in the father's church. So this is what she did. And um, when my grandfather died there four years ago, I got her gold glasses. The ones that you fold up and that you put on the chain, and they're still in the little silver. They're still in a leather little case from London from the 1870s. They're they're gold ring glasses that you sit on the nose, and that you can you can actually put them on a chain. So you know, it, it, me being the oldest grandchild, I got them, and even with my grandfather now, I am amazed that. You know that he was an electrical engineer driver in the Anna Crusher because I didn't know what actually what he did mm -hmm. and it's only when I got it that I found out that his father did much the same thing in Germany but it was nice to know that he was involved in the building of Anna Crusher and when you see the painting they have in the Hunt Museum mm. it's you know you can say at least in some part, you know, my family was part of the building of Arden Crush. Hi, my name is Patrick uh, Pryor from uh, Roxborough Road here in Limerick City. Uh, I've been doing this uh, genealogy for the last couple of weeks, which has uh, really and truly uh, been very interesting. I have found little bits of pieces of stuff that I never even knew uh, about my own family from even last night, coat of arms, never knew we had one until last night. But uh, very interesting, uh, very unusual kind of a coat of arms as well. But on the top of it, there was a little bit of Latin writing, so I checked it out to see what it actually said. And I found this quite uh, amazing. It says, a man of ability may do as he pleases. My dad was from, not from Limerick, but from uh, County Cavan. Funny enough, when you say he had a link with, uh, not much of a link with Limerick, he spent the last 50 years of his life in Limerick. Yeah. So he found it quite a fabulous place. And uh, from an outsider saying that, he was actually quite impressed with it. He obviously always liked it. Uh, I was born in Limerick. Mm -hmm. My sister wasn't, but I was born. But he met my mum in London. Oh. Yeah, he was uh, he was uh, he worked for British Rail in London, and uh, that's where he met my man. And the two of them uh, came back to Limerick. The only links we had to Limerick that's hence why we were up in Mount Saint Lawrence. And as I walked around there, I knew in my heart and soul there's absolutely no body of mine <laughs> buried up there. Absolutely no one. Yeah. But we do have a big link to to Limerick. Because, like I said, I was born. I was born in my grandfather's house. The only reason why he's in Limerick, he actually originally came from, and my, my grandmother from Milltown, Malbay, in County Clare. Mm. So that's we knew a lot about my mother's side, but very little on my father's side. And as a as a father and as somebody do, looking into his side of it, uh, he was an intellectual, a really really very knowledgeable man, and has left us with. Uh, inside there plus inside there with a lot of memories and really good memories. I know that even looking at these little few things here might mean nothing to anybody but it means a lot to me. And, uh
you know, the or there to, to stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder mm -hmm. if that's a place to go. Well, my name is Breda McNamara from Peru Power, South. This is my grandfather, um, Edward Halvey, and and his wife was um, Margaret Reardon from Massachusetts in in uh, America. So he went over in the 1900s, and she was going with her boyfriend over there, and. Um, she met him and they fell in love so he came home after a couple of years and she followed him home here to Ireland and they got married here. So they have ten children and a lot of them all went to America after that except my own dad and one of his brothers but the rest of them all went to America. But this is my own mum and dad then um, and he had ten children. Yeah. Seemingly all the families going back all generation they all had ten children. Mm -hmm. But all our family we had only two and three children. We didn't take after my father. <laughs> <laughs> Before this actually all I knew was my grandfather's name and where he came from in Croom. But now I have found gone back to he's my great great grandfather since I joined this and I have found a lot of and I'm so thrilled, actually, that, um, that we got so much information about it. And I found out then that, I would say, my grandmother's mother's um, family, they were all priests mm -hmm. and canons in Limerick, in St. Munchens and St. John's, and yeah. like she had three brothers and they all were three priests. Uh, and Patricia Sheehan and I live in 206 of Manor Park in South Hill and um, even though there would be no rainbow at the end of my story yeah. but there'll be my family and I'm <laughs> happy to find out about yeah. them. And I'll tell you a little funny story about the family tree. Yeah. I sent away one time for a record with someone, great great grandfather or something and I was showing it to my son and he said God man we're after coming up in the world didn't we? He's a lawyer. I said, no, that's a misspelt. I said, no, he's still a sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so I always says, no crack of gold. <laughs> Is that you? My yeah. father used yes. to say to me, I'd be saying looking for a shilling, which was big money that time to go to these one of these concerts. Now, we didn't really want to concert because we only just wanted to get out of school. Yes. And he said one day to me, show something, Pat. He said, Patricia, I never called me Pat any Patricia. Show something, Patricia. I think you think I'm a doctor instead of a docker. <laughs> I should have been going to money that time, you know, know, which was very funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Y